This video is all about the basics of Rightmove. In other words, what basic things do you need to know to create effective events? So we're looking at the Rightmove main screen here, and I'm going to show you some of the settings that you need to be aware of. Now, there are lots of settings, but I'm just going to show you a few, the ones that you need to know. The first thing is the webcam. You need to set and choose a webcam. What I've got on my laptop are three webcams. One of them is a virtual webcam, but we'll talk about that in another video. For now, I'm using the Logitech HD C270. I'm also choosing what video size I'll be recording videos at from the webcam. I've set it to 64480. The reason for that is because I'm also screen recording as I talk, so I don't want to overload my laptop too much. But as you can see, you can go up to quite high resolutions with uh, webcam recording. And the size that you choose is dependent upon your um, equipment specification, really. If you've got really powerful equipment, you can go up to quite high resolutions. So I'll leave it at 640 by 480 for now. Let's have a look at audio. You need to choose a microphone if you're going to be recording video. Um, I'm choosing the Webcam C270 again, so it's the inbuilt microphone on the actual webcam itself. I also have a microphone built into the laptop, but I'm going to stick with the C270 for my training videos. Photo and print section. You can decide what size photos you want to capture from the webcam. Uh, let's look at this again. It's the same set, uh, but again, I'm going to stick at 640 by 480. Now, it's also possible to take input from a DSLR camera. I'm going to talk about that on another video. So again, it's the same kind of principle. You can choose what size photos to capture from the uh, DSLR camera. So for now, we're sticking with webcam for videos and photos. And the microphone is from the webcam as well. Another setting you need to be aware of is the user input setting. Let's have a look at the user input tab. Here you can choose how you want your users to interact with the events when they are playing. I've chosen mouse and the reason for that is so that you can see what I'm clicking on during this presentation. But you may want to click touch screen or even a single key to move through screens, a USB button or even multiple keys and buttons. I will cover all this in another training video. Let's create an event. I'm going to assume that I have some friends who are getting married, John and Julie, and it's their wedding day, and I want to create an event to allow guests to record videos and take photos. So the way to do that is to click the Create button. Here you can choose to create various types of event. Now, when you first ran Rightboot, you will have been taken through the event wizard. Now, I won't do that now. I'm going to choose one of the presets here. I want the video and photo recording event. Click Next. At this point, you can choose a background image that you are going to use on your event screens. As you can see, it's showing me the one that I chose the last time. Let's have a look. I can click Choose an Image. Here I get to see the Rightboot Media Library, which was installed with the application. There are lots of images to choose from. I think the one that I had last time was from the Wedding and Valentine section. And this is the image that I chose last time. I'm going to stay with that one because I, I like, quite like that background. Click OK. Next. Now we get to choose the type of event button that will appear on the screen whenever the user has to make a decision. Here it's showing a round button style with grey icons. You can change the button style here. Let's go for square. And you can also change the icons as well. I'm going to go for black. There's a full set here. That's better. Click next. Now you can choose the font style and the font colour. I quite like the Segu print, but you can obviously pick any of the fonts on your system. I'm going to change the text colour to match the icon, so I'll, I'll go for black. That looks better. Click Next. 
Here you can choose a language. The language is what the text prompts will show in when you run the event. There are lots of languages to choose from. I'm going to stick with default, which is English. And in here you can enter a title. So I'm going to put John and Julie's wedding day. That will appear on the start screen of the event. Now click next. Right Booth will now create the event file. It's building all the screens that are needed to uh, play the event. It's compiling them all into one file and it will save it in the Right Booth events folder structure. I'll show you that later. When Right Booth has finished building the event, it will take you back to the main Right Booth screen. And as you can see now, it's showing as a preview of the first screen in the event. So the next thing to do is I'll play the event and show you how it works. Before I play the event though, I think I should save the file. If we look up here, it's actually named the file event3, but I want to save it with a more meaningful name. So let's click Save As. Now as you can see, there are some files here that I've created previously, but I'm going to name this file John and Julie. Click Save, and you can see that we are now working with the John and Julie event file. Okay, let's play the event. Click the play button. Right Booth puts the system into full screen mode and starts playing the event at the start screen. Now here we can see John and Julie's wedding day title I entered earlier. It's also prompting, click the mouse to start. That's because we have the user input settings set to mouse. So click the mouse. The next screen is the choose recording screen. And here we get the option. Notice we've got the buttons that we chose and the icons that we chose. And the color scheme on the uh, text is what we, what we chose. So we can choose to record a video or take three photos. Now, Right Booth usually defaults to three photos. All this can be changed. I'll show you later. First time round, I'm going to choose record a video. A get ready screen appears and then a countdown screen of three seconds. We're then on to the recording screen. And again, where we have a default here of 30 seconds for recording. It's actually recording me as I'm speaking at the moment. Now I can stop this sooner by finishing the mouse. The recording screen, and again, where we have a default here of 30 seconds for recording. It's actually recording me as I'm speaking at the moment. Now I can stop this sooner by finishing the mouse. Now as you saw, it played back the video to me. Again, you can change that, and I'll show you how to do that later. So that was a, <clears throat> a capture of, of video. Now let's assume the second user wants to capture some photos, so they'll come up to the system, click the mouse to start, and choose to take three photos. Again we get get ready, countdown, that's the first photo. The system now goes back round to capture the second one with a get ready, a 3 two, one screen, and the second photo. Finally, it goes round for the third photo. Get ready. Three, two, one. Notice it's showing me the photo each time and it finishes with a thank you. The system then returns back to the start screen ready for the next user. So that's really the essence of how this event has been put together. And it's all been done automatically by Right Booth. But we can change everything, and I'm going to show you how some of the basics on how to do that now. Uh, the way out of this is to press the escape key on the keyboard to take you back to the main right booth screen. So let's take a brief look at some of the design settings. All the design settings are here. Click the design button. On the event type tab, you can see that under the recording types, right booth has automatically ticked video set it to 30 seconds but you can change that to any value you like and also ticked photos and set that to three again that can be changed that can be set from one to ten that means that each user will take three photos you can also include messages questions and karaoke videos if you wish let's have a look at event structure 
Here you can see the various screens that have been included in the current event and you can add to this and remove screens as you wish. Let's just quickly look at them all. The start screen has been included. The terms and conditions screen, which is where you can actually offer your users to accept terms and conditions, is not included. User details, where you capture user names and email addresses, again, they are not included. The choose recording screen has been automatically included, and that's because we've got videos and photos as an option. If I try and exclude this, it tells me that you have to have this screen. Green screen for background replacements, we're not using that at the moment. We're not including overlay images either, um, and we don't have a logo. The get ready screen is included, it's ticked for recording videos and also for taking photos. So the get ready screen will appear each time somebody records a video or takes a photo. The same thing with the countdown screen for videos and photos. On the take photo screen we have a capture delay that allows the smile prompt to appear briefly before the photo is actually taken. Photo filters allows the user to change the actual look of the photo after it's been completed. We're, we're not using uh, photo filters in this event. Show and redo. We've chosen to show videos back to users and to show photos as well, but we're not allowing them to redo them. Emailing. We're not going to email files to anybody from this particular event. Printing photos, we're not including printing. I will cover printing in another tutorial. And we've got a thank you screen as well. We're not involving multiple monitors. And on the miscellaneous section, we are choosing to include buttons. In other words, we're going to show buttons on all the screens that need them. Okay, let's look at screen editing. If we hit the edit button, that will take us into the screen editor. Now we have a screen editor toolbox with a list of screens that are available in this event. Let's go through them briefly. We're looking at the start screen at the moment and the start screen has got three items on it. We've got a webcam item which shows the live feed from your webcam and we have two text items or label items. We have the one that we entered in during the creation of the event and we have a prompt that's been automatically added by Rightbooth, which asks the user to click on the screen to continue. And it's to do with the mouse, so it's part of the user input settings, which we talked about earlier. We then have the choose recording screen. Again, it's got a webcam item on it and some label items and two buttons in the style that we chose previously. A get ready screen, another webcam item, and another text item. The countdown screen has got again the webcam item and on top of it is a countdown item. I can move that. In fact you can move anything on any screen. A record video screen which has got the countdown for 30 seconds, a speak now prompt, a text label which is prompting the user to click the mouse to finish this video earlier. The take photo screen has got the smile prompt and the take photo screen is the one that causes the photo to be captured. We then have a show video screen which has got a placeholder in the editor for the actual recorded video and a prompt saying that this is your video. The show photo screen has got a, um, a prompt again for which photo is being take, has been shown. Um, we also have a placeholder for the currently taken photo and we have three smaller placeholders for each of the three captured photos. And finally we have the thank you screen which has just got a single uh, text label. Now this line here represents the bottom of the event flow. So from the start screen to the thank you screen is the actual process that the user will go through. So they will visit some or all of these screens as part of what they do during the uh, interaction. Anything below this line are screens which may or may not appear in the event depending on what happens during the event. So for example, the busy screen will sometimes be shown when Rightbooth is performing a time-consuming process, maybe emailing videos. Okay, let's take a look at properties. 
All the screens and all the items on them have got properties. To look at the properties for screens and items, tick the properties checkbox and this panel appears. Now as you can see, we're looking at screen properties at the moment and there are a lot of properties. Uh, we can see for screen properties that we've got a width and a height, so that's the actual width and height of the screen itself. Now what's happened is that when Rightbooth created this event, it took the size of my display and it's applied that to the screen sizes of all the event screens. So you wouldn't normally want to change that because obviously you're running at 1024 by 768, so keep the screens at that size. Obviously with you, you may be running 1920 by 1080 or, or something else and right Google will automatically create the screens at that size for you. Uh, the background property is set to image and we're looking at the flower that we chose previously. But you could change that. You could have, for instance, a solid yellow background or you could make that a different colour. Uh, or we could switch to a gradient fill, which is a mixture of green and black, and then you could change the way that the fill is applied, so we could go for a horizontal or a radial. I'm going to go back to image and it will remember my flower. Now if I click the image button, it will take me to the right booth media library where I can choose a different image. Let's ch choose that flower for instance. Uh, at any point in time I can undo what I've done with these options here so I can click the back arrow here to undo and go back to the image I had before. We've got options to flip the background so we could have the uh, we could have things on the right hand side or even up the top there. Let's turn them back to how it was. Now if I click on the webcam item I can see the webcam properties. We've got width and height. Um, we have a border property and I can make the border thicker. I can change it into a gradient. Um, I can change the corner dimensions to make it have a slightly different shape. I'll put it back to black. Now if we look at the properties on one of the label items we can see that we can set the font size and the font color and so on so I could change this to red for instance I could change the font I could increase the font size and so on so there's lots of things you can do with properties now if I move through the screens you can see that every time I move through a screen the property panel will show me the properties for the currently selected item. So if I go to the choose recording screen, notice we're now looking at the screen properties for the choose recording screen. Another thing is if I move an object around or an item around, so if I start moving this around, you can see the X and Y property on the properties panel is changing. And if I size the object, you can see the width and the height is changing. You can also manually enter those values, so I could make that five, say 600 and make that 400 and press the enter key and you get the change happening on the actual item on the screen. Uh, if I now click on say that text item you can see that it's got um, a certain font, it's got a font size and font bold and you can change all these to your heart's content really. I can change colours, widths, angles etc. Uh, it's important to know that I've made all these changes only on the start screen. So if I go to another screen, you can see that it's not affected anything on this screen. But you may want to do that. You may want to make, say, the webcam item a lot bigger. And you, you may want that webcam item to be then the same size and design on all the other screens. Now, I won't cover it in this video, but it is possible to do that with the formatter tool, which I'll cover in another video. So let's click the webcam item. If I click the lock icon here, now this becomes impossible to move. That's quite useful because once you've decided where you want things, you may want them to stay there. So you can go around locking things. So if, again, I could click this object and lock it. So now neither of those can be moved. I'm going to unlock them again. So I'm going to drag a rectangle around them both roughly and they're both selected now and I can unlock them both. Now they, they will both move together. 
So that's useful to actually select things together by dragging a rectangle around them and moving everything together. It, they will also rotate and they can also be sized. Okay, to deselect the objects, just click away from them. We can cut, copy, and paste. So let's take this object, cut it, move to say the thank you screen, and paste it in. So we've moved an object from one screen to another. Let's look at themes. Click the theme button to show the theme library, and I can browse through the library and choose a totally different theme. Let's go for that. The system asks me whether I want to apply the theme because it cannot be undone. Let's say yes. Rightbooth now works all the way through all the event and changes the theme accordingly. A couple of other things to talk about in this video. First one, how to change the contents of a text item. So let's take John and Julie's wedding day text item. Let me just uh, move these out of the way for a minute. The easiest way to change a text item is simply to double click on it. I'm just going to put the date. The final thing I want to cover in this video is how to add new items to screens. You click the Add Items checkbox and there's a set of items that can be added to any screen. In this example I'm just going to add a new image. Let's click the Image button and we're back into the Media Library. Now the Media Library has got lots and lots of stuff that you can add. You know, floral, flags, films, emojis, drawing surfaces and so on. I'm going to go back to the banners section and select this object. It adds the object onto the screen on the top layer. Now we can move that backwards through the layer by going to the properties and clicking these, I, these buttons here. So we've got move forward and move backward. I want this to be behind John and Julie's wedding day. So Click this until it ends up behind John and Julie's wedding day text item. Might take a while because there are quite a lot of objects on the screen. There we go. I'm going to size it. I'm going to move John and Julie's wedding day into it. It doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to reduce the font. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. You get the picture. Okay, that's the basics of screen editing. Uh, I'll say a lot more about all this in subsequent videos. The last thing I want to say really is that if you exit out of the screen editor, you're back at the main screen, you get the option here to save your changes. So for instance, if I exit now, Rightbooth no knows that I've ch made changes and he's asking if I want to save it. If I cancel here, I can simply save or I can save as a new event file.